The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Mangan, and I'm joined by Star Sport reporter Sean Holland. And this week, we're focusing on the big game as Cork travelled to Clarny to face Kerry in the Munster Senior Football Championship semi-final. We'll have former Cork footballer John Hayes on the show today to talk about the Rebels' chances. Uh, but first, the Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. Choose Credit Union, choose local, choose community. Now, Sean, the build-up to a Cork Kerry game is always fascinating to me because I think in recent years, obviously Kerry have had the better of Cork. So we tend to have this narrative that Cork go into any game against Kerry kind of hoping they can run them close rather than expecting to, to, to run them close or even beat them. Is that the case again this week? Uh, how's the build-up been? Yeah, Dylan, it's kind of um, the same old story, really. All right. Um, I think we're all nearly blue in the face from hearing about 1995, the last time Cork won, won down in Killarney. But um, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, you know, Cork, they're pretty much 99% sure that they'll be in the Sam McGuire, although this uh, win this weekend would confirm it getting into provincial final. But... Um, they, they'll have to wait on a couple of other results to see where they stand. Um, but they, they would like to, obviously, get the result down in Killarney and get into provincial final. But um, on the other side of it, a, a good performance um, is what a lot will be looking for as well, you know, to run Kerry close. Um, Kerry have pretty much demolished Cork every time we've gone down there. That's kind of um, what you were alluding to as well, and about um, pushing them close, nearly being a, a good performance and, and a good outcome. But... Um, they'll find it very tough. Um, although they, they have been improving the last few weeks, you know, ever since they went in that uh, summer training, or sorry, the, the training camp abroad, there's been a, a big improvement in their results and um, performances. So um, after the game against Limerick, you know, they'll be looking at this really as pretty much a free shot and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out on Saturday. You mentioned a free shot. How much... Um, does that kind of affect the mindset of the players going in? Do you know if 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 we're talking kind of in recent years about the minimum here being kind of running Kerry close? Let's say the last ten championship meetings. Um, Gaelic Statsman was sharing on Twitter eight Kerry wins, one draw, one Cork win, and the average winning margin to Kerry was eight point two points. So that's like a big average margin to be to be losing uh, kind of every year. And will the will the mindset for the players be that absolutely can't happen, obviously? And and how will they be kind of trying to refocus going in when the history kind of shows us that it has been the same story for, for a little while now? Well, there's like um you could look at it in two ways. You could look at the the positive side saying, you know, they can take the shackles off, you know, everyone's expecting Kerry to win. So, you know, if they come away with a loss, it's not the end of the world. So there's that side of it that the players can play with freedom and know that whatever comes out of it, you know, Kerry were always predicted to win this. But the other side of it then is if they do get close to Kerry towards the end of the game, will they be that mental block? Will they be that, you know, kind of anxiousness, say if they're level with 70 minutes gone, who's going to kick the point that'll get Cork over the line in, in Killarney for the last time in 30 years. So you can look at it in both ways, but um, even speaking with John, he's just concentrating on um, on himself and his own team's performance. Really, that's all they can do, you know, but um, the last two times they've gone down to Killarney and it's like 11 points and then 22 points then in 2021. So they'll, look, they'll definitely be looking to push them close. Um, 
of course every team that goes out has an intention of winning and Cork should be no different you know it's pretty much time to you know to buck the trend and um, move on in Munster and try and um, dethrone the kingdom and just before we hear from John Hayes, um, who this great chat with him about the the upcoming game and where Cork could um kind of find joy against Kerry, John Cleary was talking this week about um how the provincial structure isn't quite working. Um, in this week's Southern Star, you can can read all about it. But I just want to know the fact that Cork don't know whether they'll be in Sam Maguire or the Talchin Cup. How big of an effect does do you think that might have on a game like this? Um, and should they know before they go into a game like this whether or not they're they're uh in that competition or or how how do you think that that should work? Well, the benefit of Cork's um performances after you know their three um opening losses does take away a little bit of that pressure because of their league standing, it will be very unlikely that they get pushed down to the Talton Cup. You know, the likes of Offaly there might have to beat Dublin or the likes mm. of Sligo going to a provincial final or down. Um, you know, so they're playing our mass. So it's it's kind of um kind of looking at a way that pretty much the probability of Cork getting into the semi-guard is 99%. Now, if they didn't get those positive results in the league and they'd be there on the bubble, it would be a lot different story, you know, and Cork would be kind of almost as even more anxious going down to Kerry and that, and that could might work to know to their disadvantage but the fact that you know things would have to go very off kilter and um, to push them down to the Talton Cup uh, won't make that much b- uh, big of a difference but even talking to John and his views on it and the provincial championships he like many other managers um, would prefer to see them played prior to the league that once you finish the league you know what competition you'll be in and you can see the sense in that but then there's always counter arguments and you look at provincial councils, do they want their, you know, featured tournament being played, you know, in muddy, wet pitches in mid to early February, you know, and kind of almost losing their appeal as well. So there's there's twos and fours for it. But the fact that the Talton Cup has been brought in now with the Sam Maguire, you can see that league has a lot more importance than provincial championships. And you notice that even with the buildup of these certain championships as well like the monster hurling stands on its own but the monster football is um it doesn't really come within a breath of it so it's interesting what the ga will do um in the future i know jarla burns came out during the week and he spoke about maybe moving all ireland finals back to september but then again the other counter argument to that is the fact that you're uh, intruding into the club game and you know 95 percent of players are just involved in club alone so you got to look after them first and foremost and have them playing on the hard ground um, in the summer championships. But, um, you know, it's it's a sticky one and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, there's a, a lot of different um, strands to it. So, so a lot for um, Jared Burns to look into there. And I'm sure we'll be talking all about it. As uh, we always seem to be with, with the GA, we're always talking about structures and uh, leagues and championships and how they're all set up. So... That conversation will continue. Cork play Kerry this Saturday in Fitzgerald Stadium at 4 p.m. Um, it is a big game despite the kind of, I guess, low-key build-up. We're going to hear from John Hayes now who uh, will share how he thinks Cork can get the better of Kerry. Now I'm delighted to be joined by former Cork senior footballer Ross Carberry's John Hayes. John, how's the form? Not too bad, Sean. How are you? Good, boy. Good. Um, listen, we'll get straight into it. And obviously, the the big one is this Saturday, Cork and Kerry in the Munster Senior Football semi-final. Straight up, give us your uh, initial thoughts heading into the big game on Saturday. Um, yeah, look, I suppose the uh, recent results against Kerry, um, apart from the COVID game with Mark Keane and Patrick Keeve, have been poor. Um, especially in Killarney of recent times. I suppose the most recent one, oh, kind of had direct involvement in, in 2021. Like, you know, it was, a, it was a game that started so well, but deteriorated so badly for us. Um, you know, it's kind of it left, a, it left a, a, a bad mark for us, I suppose, at the time. Um, 
since then, uh, I guess they've played with, with the game in Parky Ring, which, you know, Cork were very competitive for a long time, but Kerry pulled away in the last 15, 20 minutes and ended up winning by 12. Um, last year, again, uh, much more competitive, brought it back um, and ended up only losing by two points, gave him, gave him a good game. But, you know, I think the, the Ron Robin games um, have... I think nearly everything has a kind of a sense of maybe a little bit of a phony war until you get to the knockout games in in Crow Park and, and that kind of thing at this stage. But, um, you know, I, I suppose this one is kind of, you know, it's a traditional Munster final. Park and down Kil- to Killarney earlier in the year than we would normally associate it with. But, um, you know, travelling probably obviously more in hope than expectation again. But, um, yeah, look... I, I thought Cork, you know, didn't really play very well against Limerick. I think most people will accept that. Um, and maybe it's not a bad position to be in. You know, we're we're written off, we're given no chance. Um, but you know, there's 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 decent quality in that in that side. Obviously, going down to play a very very strong Kerry team. Um, but we're just hoping they they can really go out, perform, um, and get close to Kerry and keep it in the mix until the latter stages. And you know, if if we can manage to spring off a, a massive shock, we'll be we'll be thrilled with it. Mm-hmm. It would be something else. Um, we're kind of touching there, John. You, you even mentioned yourself there about being involved, you know, as a selector a couple of years ago. But give us a, a few of your memories of uh, being involved with the team itself um, down through the years and heading down to Killarney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, it was a funny one, I suppose. My, my experience against Kerry, the first one was a minor game. Uh, a monster final link in Fitzgerald Stadium and uh, we didn't play all that great I think we lost by five or six points Brian Sheehan was midfield for Kerry was probably their main player at the time we did, we had a pretty good team um, but didn't play all that well on the day I was, so we ended up losing that game in the minor and then for three years at under 21 um, you know we got a win in Philly uh, we got a draw in Killarney before winning games in Cork so we never lost an under 21 so I, I suppose like my experience of going up Towards senior and playing Kerry teams in 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 Kerry wasn't that bad, but um, unfortunately we never managed to get over the line in any of the senior games that we were, we had down there. Um, I suppose particularly in Munster we were always competitive. We were very competitive at the time. Um, I think we draws in draw no six narrow defeat in no seven. We could draw again in all nine if I remember correctly. Um, and maybe even 10. I think there was four draws that I noted there when I was going back over it, including 2015 as well. So, um, you know, it's it's one that kind of probably sticks with us a lot that we, we never managed to convert uh, one of those into a win. Um, and I think we all know it's it's 1995 since, since we last won there, down there um, when Cork were, you know, off the back of a, a really good run. And I don't think many would have foreseen that we'd be here. Um, you know, nearly 30 years later waiting for for the next one and I suppose you know, the group that I was involved in were certainly um, or the two groups I was involved in were certainly uh, as close as, as we've been to getting it done but without getting it done mm-hmm. And do you reckon it was more of a mental block or anything because those teams even you alluded to there you know, late noughties there there was a great Cork football team that you were involved in um, you know, had full ability to go down there I know it was it was late equalizers there, um, you know, in a couple of years you mentioned, but um is there something about Killarney that there's just kind of a mental block there for the Cork footballers? It was just kind of like rotten luck. Um I didn't think so really when I was I, I, I didn't think so when I was involved. Maybe it had us built up a little bit now because it's been so long. I think at the time we we would have felt um we were more than capable of matching matching them and you know, could and should have got the results at different times. Uh, but we put ourselves into positions to do it, I suppose. Like, uh, I suppose we probably more just I'd say the, the mental block was a little bit more to do with Croke Park and, you know, the, the non-performances that we had up there and, and different times. Um, You know, so I think that was the big one. I think Killarney didn't hold, uh, didn't hold fear for us, I would say. But look, it's just that you're going down to play play a very, very good football team on their home patch. Um, and they take you know great pride in their record in Killarney and their record against Cork. Um, and I think in recent years as well, I mean, there's nothing they enjoy more than when they have a stone to just just keep driving at home and driving at home. You know, more than any other team, they'll put the, they'll put the foot down on Cork. Um, so we've been in 
unfortunately on the, the receiving end of, of that uh, in recent years. Um, but yeah, no, I, I felt at the time we always looked forward to going to Killarney. Um, we 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 were competitive the Munster Championship. We were perfectly competitive. I said, as I said, it was probably more, you know, the disappointing performances in in Croke Park that kind of the kind of hung over us more than say, you know, not being not being able to challenge them down in Killarney. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope they get the job done this Saturday. Anyway, but looking forward to the match itself, um, John, when you wrote your column, you kind of um, zoned in on a few areas that you reckon um, Cork have to target. The next day you made um, note of the midfield battle and, of course, um, scoring goals. That was obviously the big talking point after the Limerick game and, and their wastefulness in front of the goal. So do you reckon that John will have a big emphasis on those areas now going to training this week and ahead of Saturday? Yeah, look, I think so. I, I think an area where they've they've really hurt us has been the kick out and and midfield. They've really just pushed us and pushed us. Um, that game in Clarney was one of the first games that you'd ever seen a, a Kerry team push with fifteen players, including the goalkeeper, um, to to block up space. They they pretty much had three lines of five, um, give or take that day. You know, um, their 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 last line would have been along the kind of. 65 ish, you know, at the the extent of um what they would have considered Michal's uh, kick out range, and then two other lines of, of five pushing in high so that he couldn't get anything really off short, and then five guys covering the space in behind and in between the two and waiting on breaks. So, um, they went hard after the kick out that that time, and you know they they do tend to, like I said, um, target. Ian and Ian in particular, I think, has been targeted by Kerry down the years because they they know, you know, he's a little bit of a, he's a bit of a talisman for Cork, and that if he can, you know, win a few kickouts and get his running game going, that it, it tends to pick up the team. So I think they've gone after him hard. So, you know, no more than anyone else, Ian wanted fond memories of that game and a couple more. So I'm I'm hoping that uh, you know he he can have a big performance in that column. Um, can kick on from the very good performances that he had during the league. They're going to have to because I, I, I can foresee as well Kerry going hard, hard after the short kick out, whether it's me Hall or whether it's Chris and Gold. Um, you know, if it, if a team is pushing that hard, if they're pushing five, 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 then it's very, very difficult to get anything off short. So you're reliant on winning clean ball long. Like, I mean, the upside of it was. If you could win anything and could win a break, I mean, you've got a, a wide open chance to to punish them at the other end. So, um, yeah, it's 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 an area to kick out of midfield that will be um, that we'll be watching with interest because if uh, if we can get more joy there than we have done at other times in Killarney, you know, it, it's it, it sets us on a way to being a lot more competitive. Um, and then the conversion and chances, I mean. I think everyone's blue in the face from talking about that in relation to, to the Cork football team this year. Um, like I said, you know, on the positive side, if you're creating chances, um, uh, and you'd rather be missing chances than not create not creating chances whatsoever. But it is starting to become a little bit of a concern that we're coughing up chances so often. You know, you'd expect this after, you know, if you if you've gone two or three games, you're making goal chances you'd expect with the quality of players that we have inside that they'll start to rectify it and, and put them away. But I thought against Limerick was possibly, despite the three goals, because two of those came very late, um, despite the three goals, it was probably as wasteful as we've seen in, in any game. Um, you know, there was four four possible goal chances in the first 20 minutes, I think. Um, and then five or six in the first half overall. Another five or six in the second half. And like even if you think about it, uh, Rory Dean's goal came from a rebound of another missed goal chance um, and there was one or two as well where the last pass went astray when it was it was easier to make the pass than than to miss it so yeah I, I think the players will be aware it's it, converting those chances comes down to a few things It's com- it comes down mainly to kind of composure in, in that moment and, and that's what we need to, to add to the game um, you know when you miss a lot of chances it starts to bring a bit of anxiety into the into the into your finishing and into your play in 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 the in the scoring area as well, like so, um, a little bit more composure when we get across that forty five and win the chances are there because our, our running game does cause trouble for for teams, um, so you know if we can create those chances again the next day, um, some co- composure and a little bit of quality, and we're going to need to because if if we create 
two or three goal chances the next day. We need to stick those away. Mm-hmm. And as you mentioned it there, the running game is is a threat. Um, but also even the first goal against Limerick the last day came from kind of a high turnover with Chris Oak Jones um, just kind of like holding on inside. Do you reckon they'll yeah. employ tactics similar to that now against Kerry or will it be kind of 15 men behind the ball? I think for the most part it'll probably be 15 behind. But I do, and I would like if I was in, you know involved in certain teams, at times I'd like to encourage players to just say, you know, if you see him, if you think he's taken off, if you think your man is taken off and he's just taken off to take you out of position and he's actually not a threat and that we've got enough numbers back and we can they can control um control the the opposition already with the numbers that they have back, just hold, just hold it um and try and see what pressure can be brought brought on by the, the players that are already behind. And then um if you can affect the turnover. And you've got a target, and Chris Og did it a couple of times the last day. Like I mean, he was just jogging back into position after that. It was it was a really poor turnover from um the Limerick guy, the wing back for Limerick, um which you wouldn't expect out of Kerry, but um we got the turnover and ended up with a with a one v one inside. We had other opportunities to do the same thing, which we kind of didn't capitalize on. I think in one of the other league games, I remember watching um Connor Corbett, and it was like one of those ones he could see we were comfortable behind. Like we we were holding out, I think it was Kildare Kildare game, um, and we were holding them them out, and Connor was kind of up around the forty five inside, and he had one or two guys for company, and you could see him kind of going, do I need to go back? But he trotted back, he trotted back to get into that position, and then we actually got the turnover, and he ended up turning and sprinting, and he had to sprint sixty odd yards to try and get back to full forward to where he was in the first place, where he could have received a, a pass in 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 a dangerous position. So I do think you see it with um. A lot of the better teams you obviously see with Clifford, like you know, he doesn't go back every time. He will, he will go back from time to time, and he will put in his tackles. But there are times when he'll he'll just hold forward. Um, Shane McGuigan might do the same. Daniel Flynn in that Clare game did did the same a few times. I was watching um in the Derry game as yeah, sorry, Mc, um, no, in the Armagh game, Ryan O'Neill was trying to do it. Like, he wasn't too effective on the same day. But those kind of forwards, they almost dare you to leave them unmarked inside see because I mean if, if 15 forward players tear forward fine but if there's 14 back there already mm. like you can it's crowded and you can defend that effectively and then mm. all it is is one kick pass and you might be away and in the chance and then they won't be so quick to go a second time as well so yeah I, I do hope that the, um, the entire trio can stay close to goal a little bit more than we've seen at other times um, and, and try and expose uh, you know potential counter-attacks in that way as opposed to being 15 behind the ball every single time. Mm-hmm. And uh, just as kind of like on that, the fact that, you know, we're picking up on it, I'd imagine Jack O'Connor will probably be annoying it because as you was the example there, Chris O against Limerick and there was another um, opportunity he had against Armagh, which was very similar and he tried to lob the keeper and just pull over the bar. So one would think that Kerry have the ability, you know, to kick points all day, um, but the one weariness they'll probably have a cork is you know converting those goal chances so could you see maybe like uh the Kerry cornerbacks maybe holding a bit deeper not getting involved and just being wary of that I'd imagine they just have a, a keen eye mm-hmm. on one or two of the lads um you know dropping off the defensive 15. Yeah well like, I suppose in everything now in football it's a, it's a 15-man game and everyone will go forward at some stage you know fitness levels are impressive so you know everyone will go forward whether it's Thomas Sullivan starts or Graham O'Sullivan. Um, not sure. There's there seems to be some talk that there'll be a, a decision between Paul Murphy and Dylan Casey. They they might be the more defensively minded uh, one. Then that might you know sit and hold things. Tyg Morley does that to an extent, but everyone goes. Everyone when the opportunity presents goes forward. So I'm sure they will give them the encouragement to do that. Um, but then Kerry always kind of in these games are kind of looking down the road as well. They're always looking down the road to, to what's going to happen in, in Croke Park in later times. And, you know, will they leave a, a Conor Callaghan or someone like that, you know, totally exposed high up the field? So I think they might, they, they'll they they'll probably tend to pull one or two back deep uh, generally all the time. But I think that person will will rotate quite a bit, um, even if maybe it's Tyke Morley and or Murphy or Casey, whoever whoever might get the nod. Um, but yeah, Thomas Sullivan, we know, loves to get forward. Uh, Gavin White does it, um, uh, and whoever else will be involved. But uh, yeah, look, it's like I said, it, I think it takes just a bit of nerve if you are 
one of those forwards and you know the management obviously have to kind of you know give you the blessing to kind of do it as well but if you can say look I'm just going to hold here the guys have this covered and hope to try and get a quick counter and get one away and punish it once and it, it puts a lot of doubt into the opposition minds then after that mm-hmm. of course and um, moving on then John in terms of looking at what the message would be you know from clearly in the, sele- the selectors obviously you, you were involved back there in 2021 so Say if you were to go out um, there now to the lads speaking to him uh, on Saturday evening, what would be your message and kind of like what would be the keys to uh, to Cork causing an upset? Um, look, I suppose just looking back to 2021 at the time, as I said, like, you know, we had a great start and we went four points up after 15, 20 minutes. But I mean, if you if you went back and looked at it, Kerry came back into, into that game based on Cork turnovers. You know, Cork actually... Even after we went that, Brian Hurley got a goal. Um, we actually had two, three or four more opportunities, I think, um, to really punish because Kerry were playing so aggressively, defensively and everything else. There was space there on on, multi, on a number of occasions before half time, where we had chances to put, you know, whether to, to create goal, goal opportunities or point opportunities at the other end. And we gave the ball away. And they punished us. And they punished us at the other end. Even at halftime, I remember saying to the group, I said, look, they've come back based on our mistakes. They've really, they, they turned it around and went ahead, but it's been based on our mistakes. We we cut out those mistakes. And, um, you know, we're, we're, well in this, we're well in this game. Um, As it happened, we made a couple, couple more just after halftime. We were blown away, really, then in the end. And like I said, there's no better team than Kerry when their tail is up against Park than to just put it put it home and drive it in on the scoreboard. Um. So yeah, look, I suppose the the biggest message is that you you can't afford those kind of mistakes against the team like Kerry. Um, you can't afford to you know drop a ball short into a keeper's hands and then let them come down come down the pitch and punish you at the other end, or try a kick pass across the pitch, um, that gets intercepted, and they 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 go and they they turn around and punish you. Um, so it, it's. It's about limiting the amount of mistakes you make. It's going to, and then the simple things is the amount of effort it's going to take to um, defend and keep keep that carry team at bay. Um, we know what they have with the the two Cliffords and Sean O'Shea in particular, but you know they have plenty of other quality as well. Um, you know Moynihan and Adrian Splann, if they're selected, will probably do a lot of the you know the donkey work for them, I guess, and then. You know, they have so many options behind that. I think there's some question marks about Dylan Ganey's fitness, but they have Paul Ganey, they have Killian Spillane, um, they have Killian Burke. They have a number of options to to play that last forward role. Um, so, yeah, look, you, you can't give those guys momentum and a head of steam. We have to be... I, look, I know we're saying we need to keep one or two up, but, but in reality, they're going to pull... 13, 14, 15 behind the ball and just have to work, work like dogs, work like dogs, work like animals to try and disrupt them from from um getting into their, their rhythm and getting into their um you know, getting their confidence up. Um obviously it's you know who's gonna pick up Potty Clifford as well is a is a big question. Um I think it's like if we went back to that game in the early stages, Kevin O'Donovan uh, was picking him up and was doing quite well. And then there was a few switches on their side, a change made. And I think Kevin went somewhere else and Paddy Clifford came right into that game then after that. So getting getting the matchup on Paddy Clifford, because we've had different people mark David Clifford over the last few years, you know. Um, I think it was a Morris Shanley in the, the, the famous the COVID game that time. I know it was pouring rain, but, you know, he kept them scoreless, which is no mean feat. Uh, I think Kevin Flaheev did it in Parky Ring. Sean Meehan did it in, in that game that we're talking about in 2021, kept them scoreless. Um, so it hasn't always been David Clifford that's done the damage. You know, Body's done it, Killian Spillane has done it, Sean O'Shea has done it. So getting the matchup right, getting the matchups right, working their socks off and keeping mistakes to the minimum. I mean, those are the messages. Um, there's there's no rocket science to any of it. Um, the messages will be plain and simple. It's about working your socks off and executing the game plan and taking the chances then, as we said, when, when they do present present themselves. Mm-hmm. And it'll be interesting to see it um, play out. So finally, John, from you, I'm uh, going to push you for a prediction. I think um, the bookies have uh, Kerry's eight-point favourites. So if you're a betting man, would you would you fancy Cork to get inside that mark? Would you, would you even push for a win? I don't know. It's 
bit extreme, but uh, what, what do yeah. you uh, think um, the game is going to go on Saturday? I don't know. It's just very hard to tell because even someone sent Dan and um, I'd say you're familiar with it with the stat around the, the recent games and the margin for error where, where the eight points comes into it. It's the average margin of defeat the Cork have had. But like I said, some of those have been 17, 18 and 20 point blowouts. And then on other occasions, like last year, we push them all the way to the brink uh, and even pipped them in, in 2020. Um, so you just don't know. Like if Cork can really rattle them and you know get the game plan moving get the running game going get Sean Powder into the game uh, get the two lads at midfield in, into the game get you know uh, Luke Fahey and Matty Taylor at wing back running at them and if we can convert then at the other side with Chris O Connor Corbett um Connor Corbett's getting his first taste of this game there's there's a little bit of expectation on his shoulders um which is you know difficult for for a guy who's still very young he's only 22 and this is like I said he's not played as many games as we'd have liked to see uh, for Cork, but there's a bit of expectation on him um, alongside Brian Hurley. So, look, everything has to go. Everything has to go right for Cork to be competitive. It has to. Um, if we're not on it, and if Kerry are on their game, then you know we know we'll be punished, and we'll be punished quite severely. So, look, I'm going to back the lads to give a performance. Um, you know, the last day out down there was was tough for all of us to take so there's a lot of the guys who are still there um, and I'd be hopeful that they want to do everything to put put that right um, so a strong performance be competitive I I don't see us I don't see anyone really backing us to, to win the game but if we can keep it to, to four or five points or less um, I think it gives us something to build on going on to the, to the more serious business um, be brilliant absolutely brilliant to be amazing if we can get a win but um, look you I think the, I think most people are just going to back Kerry on this one and expect Kerry to win it. But we're we're, we're hoping for a big performance. And I look, you would love to see it still be in doubt going into the the closing stages, and that's what we're hoping for. That's it. We uh, we go and hope in here. So, um, John, uh, I appreciate you taking the time, and thanks for joining us on the podcast. No problem, John. Thank you. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union. Funding dreams for over 50 years. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. After that great chat between John Hayes and Sean Holland, who will be victorious in Killarney on Saturday. We'll have to wait to find out, but we'll be covering it all in next week's Southern Star as always. But this week, the Southern Star is out already and it's now time for us to take a quick look through What's in this week's edition? And as you may have guessed, there's plenty of build up to this weekend's Munster semi final. John Hayes, who we just heard from, has a great column where he says that the midfield must rise to the challenge for the Rebels to shake the kingdom. John's column is always well worth reading. There's great, some great insights into inter county football in there, whether or not you are a Cork football fan. We also have a report. Ahead of the game from Sean Holland, who says that it's a tall order, but Cork are up for the fight. He's been speaking to John Cleary ahead of this weekend's game. And uh, we hear from from Cleary in this week's Southern Star. He also says on the front page of this week's Southern Star that the provincial structure is not working for Cork. It's his opinion that it is unsatisfactory and that he is unsatisfied, I guess, with, with the fact that they're not sure whether they'll be in the Sam Maguire or not heading into a Munster semi-final. Plenty of inter-county coaches think that the championship should take place before the league. Um, Obviously, with, with lots of GA, there are some troubles with scheduling and uh, trying to keep the balance between county and club there. So some good reading in there as well. We also have a report from uh, cracking West Cork Derby as Carberry Rangers edged out the Haven. They beat them 13 points to 1-9. Jeremy McCarthy has a great report from that game. We have some other roundups from other games around the um, West Cork area as well. Tom Lyons has a great um, feature in this week's Southern Star where he looks back on 
some of the good days uh, the Rebels have enjoyed in Killarney. He's been travelling to watch Cork teams play since 1966 and he has plenty of good memories to share of wins in Fitzgerald Stadium. This weekend, the Munster Senior Hurling Championship also kicks off. We have coverage of that. Cork are away to Waterford and Pat Ryan is keen to learn from the lessons of last year. We also hear from Shane Kingston, who was on last week's podcast, who says the focus is all on their first game against Waterford. That's on this Sunday at 4 p.m. We've got loads more in this week's Southern Star as well. We've got local camogie, local hurling, local football. There's um, a great photo uh, gallery piece from Ross Carberry Ladies Football Club who celebrated their medals night in style at the Celtic Ross Hotel back on April 12th. Um, Emily Hegarty and co show that they're in the mix for Paris. They went to the World Cup 1 with target of finding out where they stand ahead of the next month's final and they came home knowing they're right in the mix so you can read more about that in this week's star as well speaking of the Olympics and speaking of athletics Phil Healy is also confirmed to be in the Ireland squad for the World Re- Athletics Relay Championship um, she'll be hoping to go to Paris this summer as well we've got all the usual brilliant West Cork soccer coverage from Jer McCarthy there's some under 15s news there. There's a report from Castletown Celtics, uh, five nil win over Baltimore as they clinched the league title following their um confirming their, their promotion in recent weeks as well. So they'll be playing in the West Cork League Premier Division next year. We've got some great road bowling and motorsport as well. So there's plenty to look out for in this week's Southern Star. That is in shops and online right now. You can subscribe online and get the Southern Star in your pocket, on your phone or on your laptop for less than two euro per week. It's a great time to sign up as a lot of the sport, a lot of the GAA is really getting going now as we head into the summer. If you sign up for an annual subscription, you also get a free month included in the price. We'd like to thank our sponsors yet again, Access Credit Union. This podcast wouldn't be possible without them. We'll be back again next week, hopefully to celebrate a Cork win over Kerry. Thanks for listening.